Hello everybody and welcome. In this video I'd like to show you how to make an artwork from a shoebox. We're going to use equipment that you find in your house and I'm going to give you one way of doing this project that everybody's going to have an alternative to do. Now with my project I'm going to use Hundert Vasser, the artist. Curvy stuff, lots of bright colours. Feel free to use any of the artists that I will put up here. You can also use other artists that you like as well. Once you've got your shoebox, seal the outside so it has that kind of pristine kind of look about it. I got some cling film and I wrapped it around the whole of the outside of the box and used masking tape around the edge to seal it up. And then when I ran out of cling film, I then used pieces of paper to finish off the job. You might even decide that you don't even want to have a pristine shoebox in the end. Once you've masked off the top, then you want to start working on the inside. First of all, I collected together a number of packagings, foam around the egg, avocado packaging. I chopped off the best bits of it because I wanted to make the shape of the box more curvy and changeful. If you're doing a different artist, say Bridget Riley or somebody, you might want to keep those rigid straight lines of your box uh, to create patterns. When I thought about the idea of making a box based on Pundit Vasa, I thought which space would he feel comfortable in? The visuals of his painting and thinking, oh, he could maybe be in a cave or something. I imagined a mini version of the artist walking around in this little space. And I thought that was a really nice starting point. I'm quite lucky here because I've got masking tape and I've got the equipment to make papier-mâché. Papier-mâché, which of course is paper chewed in French, papier-mâché. So I'm stuffing the newspaper into the bits of packaging. And I'm going to attach them to the inside of the box. I'm using masking tape to hold down the pieces of packaging. I'm spreading them around, making a sort of organic environment. The packaging, the stuffing, masking tape, they all form part of the armature, which is the framework for the stability and structure. I then start to add gum strip. Although masking tape is not very strong and when it's hot or soggy it comes undone, you can go straight into papier-mâché. Now you might decide for your project that you don't want papier-mâché in your piece. If you find that you're stuck for materials, you might want to just cut collage pieces out of magazines and newspapers around Richard Hamilton, he would be good for photo montage because he used that a lot in his work. John Stezica, who used black and white postcards, what would they be like in self-isolation? How would they decorate if they were stuck in a room for a month? What kind of work would they come up with? A thought experiment. This is a tendency in art, what an artist's studio would look like. Then I get onto the newspaper strips, cut little pieces of paper, no bigger than the palm of the hand, at least two or three layers, build up a solid surface. There are lots of alternatives to using PVA to create papier-mâché. You can just use flour and water and that combination does hold wallpaper paste. You want to have at least two or three layers of papier-mâché, let it dry so that it creates a hard, crusty surface. I'm using a layer of white paper. I'm going to paint it white afterwards. There we are. This gives me a really good surface to paint on top of. Start to use the artist's paintings as inspiration. I'm going to use the big way, elements of Rebellion of the Grid and City View. The colours are all very bright, there's going to be a build-up of complexity of patterns. You'll see whilst I paint that I'm starting with the larger shapes first and working my way towards the smaller shapes, especially those crisp little details. I'm trying to get an even spread of colours throughout the piece. I want to create variation in the piece. The patterns that are slightly changing as they go throughout the painting. You'll see I, I use a wide variety of shapes. This creates a complexity and 
a flow about the piece. Paint marks, they're not very refined. Go over the lines in pens to smoothen out those surfaces. Cover the entire surface. I didn't want to see any white space because in Hundertwasser's there's very little white space. Once I've finished, I unwrap the outside of the box, which hopefully will remain pristine, and it does. And then I'm ready to add the lid. It looks very inconspicuous when the lid is closed, but when you open it up, it's got this treasure trove inside. There are a few ideas for creating an artwork in a shoebox. I hope you've enjoyed that, and I'll see you next time.